There's going to be interruptions. There's going to be injuries. We know what IBJJF says. We've seen, you know, people come like, like go fast, go slow. How long does it take to get a black belt? The general, start to the, finish. The general consensus is... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. How long does it take to get a belt in BJJ? Now, there's a few belts. Let's say you're a white belt. You're like, how long? I want my blue belt now. I've been here for five minutes. Or maybe you're a brown belt and you've been there for two or three years. You're like, how long does this freaking take? It's a very good question and people ask this all the time. Now, the IBJJF has their rules. Your gym might have certain rules. And... Uh, Different people have different experience, but we're going to examine this because sometimes people get really impatient and then some people are just getting sat on and forgot about. So let's talk about it because some people go through certain belts quicker than others and there can be reasons for that. First question, does the, do the IBJJF standards matter? Uh, they matter if you want to compete in the gi. Let me explain. So there's a guy called Travis Stevens. He was judoka silver medalist in the Olympics, savage human. He got given his jiu-jitsu black belt really fast because he was like, an, uh, like a world-class judoka and was messing people up. But because they gave him his black belt quicker than he is meant to, he can't compete at black belt in the IBJJF. Yeah. So that's, yeah. you know, if you care about the gi and you care about competing, getting a belt too soon can mess up your, your registration and your ability for them to be able to do it. Yeah, that that actually happened to me too. It wasn't a big deal, but the but I remember Adam saying, he was like, "Oh, have you is your brown belt registered with IBJJF?" I was like, "No." Yeah, and he's like, "Well, if if it's not registered," but I'm like, "Yeah, but I've had it for like five years." Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, but if they don't know about it, then um, you can't get a black belt. So you need to have it for two years." Yeah, and so he's like, "Do you?" He said, "He do you want your black belt?" To be, registered, to be recognized by them or does it not matter to you? And I was like, I don't know. And he said, well, look, it doesn't really matter. But he said, I think it's kind of nice to have it recognized if it can all work out. Yep. And so he said, register your brown belt today. Like, do that right now. Mm. And then, you know, whatever. And so how you go. And it, yeah, and so I don't know if I registered the black belt or whatever. But yeah, so it is an interesting thing. Of course, if you're just not competing in their comps, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. But I think... And if your coach is like doesn't give a shit about their comps particularly, uh, that, you know, they're just not particularly focused on them, then your coach probably isn't even going to bring that up with you. Possibly not. But then people don't necessarily know because it's also, it's a bit, we've talked about this before, it's a faux pas to bring up your belt with your coach, right? Yeah. It's a little bit, it can seem uh, entitled. Yeah. You're like, so... I'm killing a when's my next belt type comp, but it's not even that. You might be like, well, I've trained for a year. Do I get the next belt or what's going on? So we have talked about how a coach might have um, a, a different standard for you because you're a competitor or they might have a different standard for you because they're trying to make you a better person. So you're being a terrible person. They're not giving you that belt. You know, like they, they, they might go, no, I want to see a bit of more patience or a little bit more something from you to get the next belt. Let's just quickly go into what the IBJJF guidelines are so we can get that out of the way. Now, I didn't know this, but there is technically no minimum requirement for white belt. Now, their whole grading system is based that you would do jiu-jitsu as a junior and work your way through the grey belts. And the grey was white stripe, yellow, orange, blah, 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 work your way up. Makes sense because white belt, it's not actually like a rank. It, no. it means you are unranked. It means you do jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah, but it's like you, you haven't... It's ground level, so you actually haven't been given a, isn't it? So that's no. maybe why there's no minimum requirement. But no, but there is rankings within that, right? Like one stripe, two stripe, if your club right. does stripes. Yep. So some clubs do stripes on attendance. They're like every three months or every six months or whenever you're getting a stripe, provided you've done enough classes. Other places, it depends on, you know, submissions or comp wins and stuff like that. But essentially, the, where the time requirement comes in is blue belt. And actually, this is the longest time, two years. They say that you have to spend a minimum of two years at Blue Belt. That's, that's the requirement from the IBJJF. But if you don't care about that, that's cool. I just saw we get this out of the way. Purple, they're saying one and a half years. One and a half. And then Brown Belt to Black Belt is one year. Hmm. Interestingly enough, the belt I spent the most time on was Purple. Wait, what's what? Uh, purple for one and a half. What? Yeah, so, so you're, you're a Blue Belt for two, Purple, purple for one, one and a half. half. So it's three and a half. And then Brown, brown Belt... Um, brown to black 
minimum one, one year. So four and a half years is the shortest pathway you could go from blue to black. Yeah. Right. But if, we, if we're realistic about this, like most people are not no. doing the full-time flat-out jujitsu yeah. life. So I would say, and we can we would just talk about our own experience here, I went through white belt pretty quick as far as I was aware, 18 months. I got my blue belt in 18 months from when I started. Uh, but then my friend Sunny, she got hers in one year. Just She was just killing it straight away. And they're like, well, okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, blue belt, yeah, it was probably similar. I was on blue belt for two-ish years. Um, yeah, a little bit more, a little bit less. But I was on purple for ages, probably four, yeah, four years, I think. I was there. And brown belt, not that long, probably. Yeah, a bit over, yeah, like a year, two years. Yeah, so right. it's, it's just one of those things, like for, di- for different people, depending on what stage of life you're at, you can spend more or less time there. Yeah. Man, I'm so pumped because I am hydrated by our good friends at Sodi. Sodi are an Australian brand who are keeping all the best athletes hydrated. Or maybe you're just a thirsty human and you are trying to be a bit less thirsty. This is my favorite flavor. This is salty grapefruit. Seriously underrated. Very fresh. Now, essentially, we are human walking oceans. We need to have sodium, potassium, and magnesium in our blood. And that's what these guys have done. So Jason Kale at Sodi have put together this beautiful product. And you, my friends, can get a discount when you order with the discount code BULLETPROOF15 for 15% off. And you can stay very hydrated. And so um, for a lot of people, I feel this is true, brown belt is often where you spend a lot of time. Yeah. Because you might have started jiu-jitsu when you're younger That's or right. not. Injured and shit. You're injured, but then also life. A lot of people get to brown belt and they're like, well, I've got kids now. I didn't have kids when I started this thing. Yeah, or a career or something. A, a career, you name it. Yeah. Life happens and then... The sheen has worn off too. You're like, yeah. jiu-jitsu is hard work, God damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that was probably more your journey, right, Joe? You were pretty quick through to, to brown? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue belt came fast. I think it came in under a year. Wow. Yeah, eh, whatever. The natural. The natural baby um then i actually can't remember yeah blue purple was all a bit of a blur but i was at brown belt for like a long time and yeah injuries changing gyms all that stuff uh, five years six years or something yeah so you know i guess the the thing for and i plan to stay at black belt for a little while <laughs> um <Fair>. yeah <laughs> i'll talk to adam about that <laughs> i um the thing, you know, if you're hearing this and you're like, oh, I'm a fresh white, because we've got a lot of listeners who are like, I just started. What right? can I expect? Now, here's the thing. A lot of this is predicated on the, on the idea that you're kind of training consistently and regularly and there's no real interruption to that. But me being a brown belt for that long was because I had numerous interruptions, right? Now, the interruptions are going to come. And he, here's something that can and will happen to you more than likely. You will be making great progress and you'll be very close maybe you know this, maybe your coach tells you, or maybe they don't, but within the, you know, the coach's eyes would be like, oh, so-and-so, you know, ready for the next stage, be it a stripe, be it a belt. And then you take a holiday or you get really busy at work and you don't show up for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then that will just kind of knock you back a little bit. It will. Right? Mm-hmm. And then you'll get back on a path. And then who knows? Maybe you get knocked, maybe you get sick. Maybe there's a COVID lockdown. Maybe, maybe you cop an injury, you know, whatever. Surgery. It, yeah, before you know it, you're like, Six months ago or a year ago, you were just on the cusp of getting a new belt and now you're still at that original belt. Yeah. Right? And it's just, it's just very important to understand because a lot of it's out of your control. Not all of it always, but a lot of it's out of your control and it doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter. But most coaches are going to have a standard. Yes. And so in a binary sense, like, well, did you meet the standard? Yes or no? And as much as they want to like have empathy for, oh, you got sick. It's like, yeah, but... I need so and so to hit this many classes, and I want to see this kind of consistency. And yeah, you know, it's so tough. I ju- yeah, I just put that out there for the newer cats to not get disheartened, even though you're still going to get disheartened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and look, you know, I'm going to put this out there, uh, Fabio Caloy, um, Fabinho, who has been one of the most active competitors, and I think he was awarded like Alliance's best competitor last year or something like that. That guy was on his brown belt for like four or five years because they were sandbagging him. <laughs> Because they wanted him to be world champion. I'm not saying this was not his choice. Like, 
Shout out to my boy, Batman, Fabinho. Some of the best biceps you've ever seen in your life. A featherweight guy, potentially a lightweight guy. You know, Michael Lange, Cobrinha, Lucas Lepre. Like, there were so many alliance guys ahead of him. They're like, no, you stay at Brown. And you stay there till you, you win us a championship. I don't know how many silver and bronze medals he has from that time at Brown Belt. But they just kept him there for gi and no gi. Mm. And, like, he just wasn't under his authority. He would have loved to be a black belt, but they're like, no, you're going to stay here. And th- I'm against this idea of sandbagging, but it was just that within the ranks, that's where they kept him, even though he was one of the best in the world. Yeah. So I think that people get the wrong idea. They're like, yeah, but if I compete more and I do this and I do that, it doesn't mean you necessarily go up depending on what gym you're at. If your coach expressly says to you, I want to see you compete because that's a requirement of you going to the next level. Sure. That's, that's cool. Yeah. But uh, I mean, look, the, I'll give you an example. So yeah, like, don't be good at jujitsu. That's the main <laughs> takeaway from what JT just said. Basically. Like, like be sh- you know. Yeah. If you get too good, you'll get held back. Yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. No, I'm just saying that's an example of someone who you would think would get their black belt ultra fast. Yeah. But they didn't, even though they were one of the best in the world. Yeah. Uh, so opposite counterpoint to that, Hobson Mora, he, um, he's a bit of a legend, uh, founder of Nova. Well, one of the... No, he's not a founder of Novi Yunyao. He was one of the best at Novi Yunyao and he's part of RMNU, which is his association with them and he has his own thing now. He graded from, they say he was graded from purple to black belt. But this is back in like 1995. It's kind of, or 1994, it was before the IBJJF was an official thing. But he competed, I think, at the first IBJJF Worlds. Now, I might be wrong about this, as a black belt. They graded him to brown, and then they, the team didn't have anybody at his weight at black belt. So he was technically at brown belt for, I don't know, eight or nine months. But then they were like, we need someone at Worlds at black. And they gave him a black belt. Huh. And he won via six submissions, all different submissions. Yeah. Submitted everyone. That's kind of why he was the like featherweight goat at that time. Right. Because it's like, this kid's a purple belt. Oh my God, now he's a black belt world champion. What the freak just happened there? And, and it's not that he wasn't a brown belt. I think he just maybe didn't compete at brown belt. Right. So, he, yeah, one of the best in the world at purple, also one of the best, like, basically world champion at black belt. And so he kind of, it seemed like he may have skipped a step. And I think in the earlier days of jiu-jitsu, how long you spent at a belt didn't matter. It was more about how good you were. Yeah. And I think we're seeing more of that now, right? Yeah. Absolutely doesn't yeah doesn't really matter right yeah rank doesn't necessarily still relate funny that they call to skill. Oh, you know, they call Nicky Rod the black belt slayer I mean I know yeah. he's got a black belt now but even when they were calling him that before he got his black belt I'm like yeah but we all understand like at, in the no gear game especially good the belts don't mean shit it's like not, if you're a good grappler yeah you can be a fucking handful for anyone and maybe you've never stepped foot on a jiu jitsu mat maybe well, you're just a wrestler who's done some yeah but that doesn't matter if it's submission wrestling right I think it matters more if you put the gear on him it would matter. Absolutely, but you know. So we're putting. We're, but there's we're, no gi on. Them. We're speaking in the context of gis and belts, right? The gi, yeah, right. So I think that's that's where it, you, it kind of is a little bit more relatable. The gi is is harder. It's pretty hard to skip steps in the gi if you haven't had gi training because it's unless you've done judo, or you've done sambo. Even if you're a really great wrestler, uh, yeah, you're not going to be a you're not going to be like a a div one wrestler. Put a gi on and think you're going to be better than a black belt. You won't be. No. The the, the 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 evening of the play the leveling of the playing field there is there's no gear here you can't control me i'm a big animal what are you gonna do you know i'm excited why's that we have an apparel sponsor parry athletic such good gear and it's incredible I'm, i've been enjoying it bro george came through messaged us on the instagram said he's been following our program for ages he's getting stronger and more mobile and he's got this cool gear company called parry and he wants to send us some stuff and he told me that his mission was to create the best pair of training shorts ever. Yeah, he wanted something that he could lift and roll in and that could accommodate thick muscular thighs and hips. And that suits us. Speaks to us. Also, what I like is I love the colorful design. It's It actually looks really cool. I am the most colorful dude on the mats these days, hands down. Yeah, you get that kind of expression feel. A lot of other jiu-jitsu gear is kind of a bit boring. Yeah, it's, it's all like comparison. grays and blacks and shit. This stuff is the color and the vibrancy. It makes you stand out. And uh, I think... The thing that I've loved about it is just it feels good. It feels good. It looks good. And you, ladies and gentlemen, can get 
a discount when you go to check out. If you go to parryathletics.com, when you go to check out, put in the code BULLETPROOF20 and you get 20% off. Oh, yeah. So what can you expect? You've just started jujitsu. You're three months in and you suck. Anybody who says to me, like what I've been hearing recently, this is from a lot of tech folks because obviously I hang out with tech folks now. Well, I'm in their, I'm in their group chats and they all want to try jujitsu and they're like, oh, I'm going to get so good. And then they're always like challenging me. They say that, I'm going to get so good. Yeah, oh, I'm going to be great. This is a seven-year-old Yeah, tech chat. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> they're, they're, all, they're, you know, they're ranging from 21 to 51, but they all act like teenagers right. when it comes to this shit because they don't know what they're talking about. And they're like, yeah, I've got my first like free trial class tomorrow. I'm going to get so good. And you're like, oh, yeah, cool, cool. That's really nice. And as you would all know, if you're hearing this, if you've done jiu-jitsu a couple months, you're like, oh, I still suck. I still don't know what I'm doing. That extrapolates over a longer timeline. Like even when you're a blue belt, you get the blue belt and you're like, oh my God, I'm still, I still suck. <laughs> but when you're a white belt, you look to the blue belt like they know what's up. They, they're blue. That's... That's the next level. And, and it changes over time. Obviously, the more you know, the more you realize you do not know. Um, but honestly, if you, I would expect that you're going to be on your white belt for two years. Uh, that's what I would say. Yeah. For, my, for the average person. Yeah, I think that's a fair, a fair kind of timeline to assume. Yeah, and if you're there longer. And two years of training consistently. Consistently. Like, you know, whatever, a week off, a holiday here and there. But on the whole, you, you've been showing up for two years. Yeah. And, and, you know, we always recommend three times a week. If you can get five, wow, amazing. But I feel like that's not – it's probably not sustainable for the average human. You're going to have weeks where it's one yeah, or two here and there. And, again, our recommendation of three is based on most people who do five – can't sustain it and then they end up crashing and burning and taking two months off Off and then it's so it's like you just come in a little bit lower and it's a more sustainable thing i I can do this every week yeah definitely and i mean three times a week you're seeing your coach every couple of days yeah definitely you know that's yeah it's really consistent it's a good thing and look the blue belt i feel is possibly more challenging than it seems because you feel like when i get to blue belt i'll know jujitsu and then you're just like nope don't know jujitsu, but I feel like I should be better than I am. I feel like that we've talked about it before, people quitting. This idea of attainment that you're going to get there and you're going to know is kind of bullshit. You'll get to blue belt, but I feel like people languish here because they their knowledge doesn't marry up to like, oh, the rank. Oh, I've got a rank now. Well, no, blue belt is the real white belt. Now you're starting to learn. You've got an idea of the game. You know how much you suck. You're in it now. Let's go. Like I feel like the hard work is really at blue belt because there's there is a little bit more expectation and coaches looking at you like, Harry, but you're a blue belt. Like we've been doing this two years. Shouldn't I've shown you this? Why don't you remember this, Joe? Haven't you been writing this all down in your BJJ diary? Of course, coach. Haven't you been drilling Absolute, this? But my every my spare moment ate, <laughs> ate my diary. Bullshit. <laughs> I um. Did yeah. you feel did you feel pressure at blue belt? Oh uh, nah. Blue belt for but me. But didn't was you different. compete? Yeah, but I was just on a tear. You were you were blue you belt were loving was just it. like fun. I, I probably I think I thought I knew everything and I was just going ham on the athleticism, just yep. full tornado. Yeah, nice. And um Tasmanian devil. Very little technique. <laughs> but I had, you know, I had a couple of like moves. You got that a worked. couple moves, right? Yeah. You know? And um I mean it was a different time back then. People didn't know a lot of jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so Perfect. yeah no it was very much it, it kind of was a different experience right and then i think the humbling came later right when i was like maybe not even at purple purple and blue kind of to me felt the same sure even in competition i remember showing up and just being like doing the same shit at a purple belt comp and then just winning it and right. go oh. oh okay like there's actually there wasn't a jump there huge yeah yeah and um Again, different time. There's only like four people at a jiu-jitsu comp. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then and then at Brown, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Okay, wow, I got a lot of go- I got a lot of holes here. <laughs> it's tough. This is a steep hill. But yeah, I think I was really in a in a I don't know, whatever. I think that previously world. No, well previously in jujitsu, because there was no leg locks at blue and purple belt. And you could start to knee bar and toe hold at brown. That did change the way 
the game was played. It, yeah. it did become more savage. But now because people are practicing leg locks at a younger age or in their jiu-jitsu life, their game's more savvy, right? They're, they're more attacking. They're also more defensive. So yeah. I think because the game's evolved, the belts have kind of gotten harder. That's, that's my take on it. I think most people, every generation can see that, you know, purple belt used to be such a like – so let me rephrase that. The older generation can look back and go, wow, blue belts today, they're crazy. Like of the next generation. And then that next generation is like, well, blue belts today, they're on some next shit. Like every time the game evolves, the basic standard just goes up. Yeah. And goes up and goes up. And it's not as simple as just, oh, how do we open the close guard? It's like, no, we don't even play close guard anymore, bro. Who cares about that knowledge? You know, like it's... We're talking about this morning about like... Um, attacking the back yeah and this sort of more traditional belief of like if you've if you've taken someone's back you're finishing you should be yeah. like you should absolutely be finishing but man if you get someone's back in no gear now and they got good defense strong chance you're gonna have to move somewhere else like it's it's a ta- or even on the even in the gear right depending yeah um it's just uh, the way like i know i was sort of commenting on that like back then if you got to someone's back they basically gave up yeah. Or if you mounted someone, they kind of basically, like we yeah. just accepted positions. Whereas now it's like, no, nah, don't accept anything. No. And, and yeah, definitely as much as attacks have gotten better, defenses have gotten better. Yeah. And people have just gotten even, even more improved at the smaller nuances of each thing. Um, and I think for me, because I spent my most time at Purple Belt, it was also the time I put the most pressure on myself because that's probably when I cared the most about jujitsu, And it doesn't mean I don't care about jujitsu now, but it was like my life. It was the two a days, three a days, live in Brazil, want to be a world champion. Like, yeah, full commitment. This is everything. And if I don't succeed at this thing, then I am nothing. Yeah. And it was also super competitive. Like when I look around at the, the purple belts at that time and I look at who they are now, it's like, that's... It's a competitive time to keep up with these cats, you know. And uh, anyway, I mean, I was, how old was I? I was like, just before I was 30, I was like 20, yeah, 29-ish, 30-ish. Man, it was one of the things where my obsessive mind allowed me to just go into this, uh, I don't know what you call, like a, a rabbit hole. And I couldn't see much outside of it other than just being really good at it. And... It doesn't, that's not why it took me longer, but I mean, I just put so much time and energy there. And you, you, you probably have this at different phases in your life, whether it's a business or a relationship or a hobby. You're like, for example, someone I know got into bow hunting and then they realized how hard it was and they're like, shit, I'm going to have to practice every day. And like, like archery, basically become like an archer mm. to want to then turn this into a skill. And they had like probably nine months where they were doing it all the time. And then uh, they got an injury at jujitsu, and then they couldn't. <laughs> they couldn't. <laughs> they couldn't do it, right? They got a shoulder injury, right? And so get a rifle and be a real man. <laughs> that too, um, but yeah, it was so. It's so funny because we have these episodes in our life where we can invest the time, mm. and then the ebb and flow of life is like now you don't have the time. You can't. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, and that might mean that you were so cl- like you were saying you're so close to getting that belt, and then you move house, and you got to change gyms. And now they're going to sit on you for a year or two or whatever the hell, right? That's right. It's and a, so they should, right? Yeah, that's part of the process. Yeah. I, I do remember, um, I always loved how Adam is extremely open about yeah. his giving of belts. Communication. Yeah. And I remember there was a guy, James, um, you remember James uh, James Diamond who trained yeah, with us? Yeah, yeah. He's up, up north now. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Moved up to Brisbane. Lovely guy. Up to Queensland somewhere. Goldie, I think. But he was like... He had bounced around gyms just because of his life. And I remember Adam was like, he had to leave our gym. And Ads was like, when he gave the, the blue belt to him, he's like, I couldn't bear the thought of this guy <laughs> having to change gyms again yeah. and, and, and again being a fucking four-year white belt mm. when he's really good. Yeah. So he's like, you know, he's a blue belt. Yeah. You know, and he gave it to him. And then like that week he was gone. He did leave. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's a thing. Um, and consistency piece. And it's not hard it's it's not as it's not as easy to be consistent in a modern life no and what i'd say and this is the thing i'm saying about our our good tech bro community they're so focused and efficient like these are the 
Mm. We, these are our dork, dork friends who don't Very do nice. jiu-jitsu are like, oh, I'll get good really quick. Awesome, yeah. They don't know. They, I just can't wait till they try it and then realize this is so hard. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this. It's like, that's right. Quit now. Just keep building some apps, suckers. Um, no, it was. it's interesting because they are so dedicated to their business and, and startups and, and what it takes to make that happen. They automatically think that because they've climbed that mountain, well, they'll just climb this other mountain real quick. And it's like, you have no idea. It's not, it's not like that, man. This is, this is harder than anything else you're going to do because of the injuries and because of life and because of everything else that gets in the way the chance that you're going to make your life less distracted and more boring so you can be good at this is very low. Less distracted and more boring so that you can make space for jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost right everyone will never do that. And that's the hardest thing because we want stimulation. We want cool shit. Well, you've got to let go of one hand to, to, to grip onto something else, right? Like it's, you literally have to get rid of something to make space for the new thing. And jujitsu takes up a lot of space. Yeah. So, um, for anyone out there, you're on this journey. Don't, bro, you're making me reflect on all the things I sacrificed to be where I am now. <laughs> she And you should be proud of that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm mostly very proud of that. Yeah, good, <laughs> good. You should be. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself, Joe. Um, look, I think ultimately, if you're unsure of where you're at in the journey, that is, it's this weird thing between coach and student that coaches, I've seen this before, where a, co a student has asked the coach, so am I due for my belt? And the coach went, nah, not, not now. now. <laughs> because you brought a certain level of ego to it that has indicated a lack of maturity for the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like some coaches will want to see a degree of personal development, not just jujitsu skill. Ma and maybe you brought ego to it. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you just asked an innocent question. May maybe. The coach is like, you're getting too tall, puppy. Six months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can wait. You can just keep waiting. Tell me um, what what would be our general let's let's take all of this into account, right? There's going to be interruptions. There's going to be injuries. We know what IBJJF says. We've seen you know people come like like go fast, go slow. How long does it take to get a black belt? From the general start to the, finish. The general consensus is ten years. I don't think that's realistic anymore. No, that's that's kind of what it used to be, right? That's yeah. that was what it was. For me, it was just shy of that, like nine and a half years. That that was kind of it. But I did go really hard for six six or seven of those years. From white to brown, I went really hard to get those skills. And so then it was like pretty quick to go from brown to black. For you out there, if you're if you're not prepared to do two a days and you're, you're lucky if you can get three a week, you're probably looking at more like 15 years, yeah. including injury. Because I, I would definitely say so. This year is my 16th year in jujitsu, and I lost two to three years on injury, like broken ribs, bulged discs, torn ligaments. Like, how long? Your knee surgery took you out for a while, right? Yeah, a couple of years, I guess. Yeah, it's tough, right? And it, yeah. this is part of the journey. Yeah, it's, oh, it's a year and a half. Not guaranteed, but it's it could it could be you. Yeah. So, I'm going to say 15 years. Yeah. From from white belt to black belt. With life's interruptions, fifteen, and you shouldn't. Seventeen, you should, yeah, more. You shouldn't get long time. You shouldn't. By get, the way, you shouldn't get dispirited. Like if you're starting jujitsu right now and you're thirty-five years old, you're like, I'm probably not going to get my black belt till I'm fifty. That's okay. Thinking about getting your black belt is not going to help you. You've got to look at your life on a day-to-day -day basis and go, how can I just get get to class yeah how can i i make it so that even if oh, i didn't make it to every class but i can get to that open mat or i can do a drill in the garage with my mate like just find a way to keep it in your life that effort is as important as competing or doing whatever else yeah i don't i don't i think our mind somehow is incapable of even thinking about a black belt when you're a white belt like yeah. you remember you touched on it before when you're at a comp and you're a white belt you look at the blue belts and you're like in awe. Oh, it looks so strong and fit. And then when you're a blue belt, you look at the purples. Maybe the brown. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't even look at black belts and think that that was a reality for me. I don't think that's true. I think it's changed. Everyone's looking at Gordon Ryan. Everyone's looking at Nicky Rod. Everyone's looking at the black belts. Uh, they might be watching, but I don't think they're seeing themselves in that spot. No, no. But what I'm saying is there was no social media for black belts before. There is now. 
like the number of black belts that are in your feed is unparalleled compared to what it used to be. Yeah. And people are like, oh, but I want to be like Gordon Ryan. I'll take his stack. I'll, I'll do, I'll, I'll contact Craig uh, Jones's drug supplier and I'll do them steroids. No, like yeah, people, people are trying to act like black belts now without the dedication and the, <laughs> the hard work and the granular stuff. Yeah, perhaps. Kind of, kind of, I think I'm getting at a different point. More just like seeing that and thinking that you will be there one day. I, for me, I think that we don't, especially when a journey is that long, we just have a way of like um, splitting it up to be like the next milestone, which is more achievable. But I think technology has sped things up, right? right. Like the acceleration of technology, which is the, you know, Moore's law, like every, every two years, it get, like it's, it doubles, doubles up. or what, whatever the equation is, right? I believe that that has brought our level of impatience forward. We are more impatient mm. now than we ever were. Yeah, right. But actually, because we cram more in because of the expectation of life, we are less likely to go faster in jujitsu. As strange as that sounds, the speed and evolution of technology and busyness of life will mean you're going to get your black belt slower, not faster. Just because you can access the information easier doesn't mean you'll be better at doing those techniques quicker. That's what I'm putting out there. Not that you need to be dispirited by that. You will be a better blue belt than I was. You will be a better purple belt than I was. So your quality of jujitsu will, I, I think, ultimately be better so you can be satisfied in knowing i'm good at jujitsu that's something you should be really proud of mm. but yeah the journey is a long one take your time be patient it's worth it folks we love you to bits and we really do want to see you get that black belt and um, just because it takes time you got to chip away you got to chip away slowly and surely and that's what we do we chip away slowly and surely at this podcast we're constantly doing stuff to try and make it better and we take what you say on board because we love your feedback. Here's some feedback for y'all. We need you. You are our friends, our companions on this journey to us being Black Belt podcasters. And you know what will help us get there? You subscribing and on audio, following iTunes, Spotify, you name it. But leave us a five-star review. Why? So that other good people like you are going to connect with this. That helps us. We help you. We appreciate y'all. Thanks, fam. Cheers.